Greetings. My name is Keith Prather with Armada Corporate Intelligence. I'm here with one of my great friends, Kevin Huntsman from Mastio. And uh, we want to walk through this new distributor study that we've been talking about. So uh, how are you doing, Kevin? Doing great. Thanks for uh, your time this morning and look forward to the discussion. Absolutely. Now, you and I have worked together now for over 15 years. Yep. And uh, I'm always fascinated. I, I love the CBA. Uh, it's, it's a tool that I have used in business so many years to drive corporate strategy, to drive acquisitions. And we've done so much with the study. And that's why I feel like I'm personally invested in it and so excited about the fact that uh, we're launching this distributor study together later this year. So do, we just want to take, you know, five, 10 minutes to maybe uh, run down what this is and how it works. And so I'm going to share a few slides, Kevin, if that's okay. Uh, that's great. Have you talked just a little bit about, you know, what a CV is, CVA is, I can't even talk right. And, uh, you know, what it really does for customers. Well, Keith, thank you. And I appreciate the opportunity to discuss the study that you and I are partnering on. And I'm very excited uh, for the opportunity to walk through some of these slides today. And really a, a, a Mastio Armada study focuses on answering the following things that you see here. And in all of this data, I think it's important to back up all of this data that we're going to collect is going to be done with an experienced group of people capturing this information over the telephone. And the data that we collect answers questions around what are the most important drivers of the distributors, customers' selection process. What's important to them? That's really critical here. And in the, the Mass to Armada study will provide a, an extremely in-depth overall view of what's important to these customers, as well as how they perceive the value of the products and services that they that they purchase relative to the key competitors. So is, is company A in a better position than company B? Are they perceived to be a higher cost, lower benefit type uh, pr provider? So that's the types of answers that this study will uh, provide to subscribers. So in addition to that, you, you understand yourself, where am I at in the marketplace? What do my customers think of me? Uh, which competitors are the most vulnerable? Where can I go capture share wallet? Where can I capture business? to grow. And then who's the strongest? So it's sometimes it's about who do I go after, but then sometimes who do I stay away from? Because I know they've got at this point in time, a better value proposition, and I'm not going to be able to take business from them. In addition to this, you can understand and learn what are the areas for improvement that I have as a distributor? What will have the most impact on my ability to go capture new business, as well as retain the existing business that I have? And then the marketing communication piece is, is extremely valuable as well. So in addition to attributes that we would ask that measure their perception, we're also going to ask a series of voice of the customer. So VOC type questions, we're going to capture the net promoter score, that likelihood to recommend. But this data can help you as an organization understand what do I need to emphasize in the marketplace? What are the key talking points for my organization that will help me sell to my customers, that will help me get business from other customers? as well. And I know, Keith, you've used this data in, in, in companies that you've worked with directly and leveraged this information specifically for companies in, in transportation and other areas as well. Oh, yeah. We've used it in so many different ways. And, you know, one of the things that I saw, you, know, you shared a, a recent study you've done with uh, one distributor, one big, large regional distributor. And I thought it was fascinating when we looked at the attributes. And I don't remember, Kevin, was there, you know, roughly 18 to 20 different attributes, maybe 22 attributes? Overall? About, about 20 yeah. attributes. And then we always have an attribute, Keith, around the perception of pricing, as well as an overall performance. And as I mentioned a moment ago, that likelihood to recommend, which generates the net promoter score so many companies are interested in. Well, I think what happens to companies is I think they get in their head what they think is important to customers. And then when I looked at the attribute rankings, you know, and, and that's the neat thing about this kind of primary research is that you're able to find out from the customer's mouth, what exactly is important to them. And when I saw that list of attributes, I, I had in my mind what I thought was going to be most important. And then when they came up, it actually surprised me as to what was most important. And in, in talking to a few other distributors, what we've learned is that they were surprised as well, mm -hmm. uh, learning that they have been investing, not necessarily in the wrong things, but they haven't been investing heavily enough in the right things, uh, which I think is, is one of the fascinating outcomes from the study itself. Uh, but one of the things I want we wanted to do is show you one of the um, one of the key documents, one of the key uh, ob observations that you normally get from a consumer value uh, study, and and it's the value map. And I'll let you describe the value map in a second. But I just want to preface it by saying that I have used this map and I have seen this specific map 
lead to nearly five billion dollars in acquisitions. And I know we're not showing typically we'll have like distributor names or competitor names on this. But when you think about an industry, we look at the industry as a whole. Um, and then I'll let you describe exactly what the map is doing. So just to orient everyone to the map, the X axis is the plot for the what we call the weighted quality score. So what Mastio does is we we take a composite of all these attributes, these 18 to 20 attributes that we measure and create this X axis plot. The Y is the price. So whether it's uh, a value received for the money paid or a competitive pricing or a combination of the two, we then create that plot for the Y axis. And I think it's important to point out that the Y axis plot is an inverted axis. So you see companies in that inferior offering space, those are distributors that have are perceived to have a very high price but low benefit. So be, be below the average on the benefits that they're providing. So really a place you don't want to be. So Dr. Gale, the father of customer value, really calls that a wither and die area. You cannot be that company that is the highest price perceived as well as the low benefit for any extended period of time because people will shift away from you. Oftentimes it's that old, that old death by a thousand cuts. You really don't realize it that they're walking away, but they are. So the bottom left is what we call the economy offering. That's the low price, low benefit. Not a bad place to be if, you're, if that's your value proposition. And if you look at that yellow line that goes through there, that's called the fair value zone. And what that basically states is you can be anywhere in that fair value zone and be a company that's offering a, a price that's commensurate with the level of service that you're providing. So from a retail perspective, what I would typically use would be in the bottom left would be a dollar tree. Low price, low benefit, but profitable. The upper right would be, say, like an Apple store, a high price but a high benefit, high average sales per square foot. So, and they're very profitable as well. And, and that moves based on a question that we ask, how, what percentage of your decision is based on the price versus the benefits? And about 75% of the decision here is based on the price. No surprise, but it's how you differentiate on those benefits that leads you to be perceived as someone in the bottom right that's a superior offering that's offering above average benefits at a below average perceived price. So for the dollar that you spend, you feel like you're getting a good value for that. And then lastly is the premium offering. So those companies in that upper right. And, and ideally, if I were the CEO of an organization, I'd like to be in that upper right. I'm, I'm extracting more value for the services that I provide. I may be perceived to be a little bit higher, but I'm perceived to be a premium offering. So if you're oftentimes in the bottom part of that uh, fair value zone, you're out there extracting, getting more business. If you're on the top of that, you're in a position where you may be losing business. So there's that fine line between that price that I pay to that service that I offer and that value that the customers feel like they perceive that they receive. Yeah. And Kevin, we've taken several years of this data. In fact, uh, I've got one client specifically that's been using it and we've looked back over 15 years and we've overlaid market share on top of this map. And it is amazing how accurate it is in predicting market share gain and loss. Uh, and one of the things that we noticed is that obviously, as you already said, that this category uh, of competitor up in this area in the inferior offering zone, we have seen market share declines consistently in this area, whereas companies that are offering that superior value experience are typically in a market share gain position. Now, the most savvy do the study every single year participate and what they do is they drill their position on the map by either you know if, if they're sitting in one particular year down in this position they know that they've got a little bit of uh they're leaving money on the table right they can increase Correct. their prices because customers are willing to pay more to get up in this fair value zone so they're they're offering a premium offering type of service but they're charging well, not an economy rate for it but they're they're charging less than they probably should be. And so we know companies, very sophisticated, large Fortune 100 companies that have drilled their position on the map very, very accurately. And um, consistently for year after year after year. And they're a very profitable organization as well. Absolutely. They know exactly where to spend money. They know exactly how to invest. They know what to talk about in the marketplace. And they know how to price their products or services. So uh, very fascinating. It, this is just one of those tools that we looked at. But one of the other things that I also enjoy from the CBA so much is as a, as, a, as a company, as a user of one of these studies, if I'm one of the participants, I love the fact that like for a sales force or marketing force, I can use these head-to-head -head comparisons. And um, as a participant, I get to see how my company racks and stacks against the competition. And it's, it's based on the relative um, 
uh, each of the attributes that we talked about earlier. So you see all the attributes and you see where we're strong and where we're weak. Um, I, I, I'll let you talk about it in a second, but yeah. I, I mean, I've, I've used this so much to help sales forces understand how to attack a competitor and how to go after them, how to grab that market share. Well, I think, I mean, the Massey Armada study for the distribution group here is really going to connect the dots between what the customers are telling you and what you need to go to do, go do in the market to grow because you can hand this, as you said, and say, hey, company X, as I mentioned earlier, maybe someone we want to target. These are the areas we want to talk about without ever mentioning or referencing that competitor. Go in with that story, with that narrative, what we do well, knowing that, hey, our sales reps are problem solvers. We know that's a gap for the other company. We don't have to talk about it, but that's what we, uh, we don't have to talk about the competition, but we can talk about what we do, the solutions that we provide an organization. And I think a, a key point here too, Keith, is with the, the analytical deliverable, uh, the software that we have uh, to subscribers, they can create this exhibit based on different markets, types, uh, states, sizes of companies, uh, importance of customers. So there's ways to really take this and, and, and drill down into specific areas. We had a, a client in the uh, uh, transportation industry uh, really grow their footprint in the Northeast with uh, new terminals. And they leveraged the Massey Armada data to understand what do we need to do to grow in this area? What's important? Who are the key competitors? What can we talk about? What do we need to focus on as we move into this area? Well, and the one thing I love about the data tool too is that you can extract that data into like Excel spreadsheets and you can co-mingle it with a lot of corporate data um, internally so that you know you can do a lot of additional analysis on your own uh, using it. Now, the two slides that we just showed, Kevin, uh, as we both know, I mean, it, it's only two of what are typically 60 to 100 different slides. Absolutely. Yeah, so analysis. many deliverables. And we have we have clients too, Keith, and I think this is an important point out that we'll, we'll leverage and, and put this data into that Microsoft BI. So yeah. they're they're taking this data and putting it next to other data from their organization to, to really tell an entire story and about the organization. It's it's a, obviously I think customer experience metrics need to be looked at and measured like a company measures financial metrics. They do it on an ongoing basis. And that's what this study can provide you with are those types of metrics that obviously you don't have financial, you don't have money if you don't have customers. So how do we understand our customers better and how can we grow our business? That's right. All right, let's get down to the, the nitty gritty on exactly what this is. So this is this is what we call a multi-client study. So multiple companies participate in uh, the actual research project, if you would say. Um, I'm going to let you describe it a little bit from your perspective, and then maybe I can talk about the benefits. Yeah, absolutely. So as we mentioned, a multi-client study is a, a, a group of companies that come together and we conduct one study. There's There's a lot of benefits that you'll talk about here on the second major bullet point there. But as, as part of the process, it's a very collaborative process. So we'll work with our subscribers up front. We wanna get a list to make sure we're getting feedback from the, the entire landscape of your organization, not just your biggest customers, but let's get a sample of the biggest, the middle size and some of the small. And we get a lot of data on, on companies from customers that may not be on their list because if I'm conducting the interview, the Mass DR Armada team's interviewing someone that works with just electrical distributors, we ask who are the top four companies you've worked with in the last 12 months. So we're going to pick up data on companies that A, may not be a subscriber to our study and B, may not be on the list of another company. So our goal is to capture as much high quality data that we can uh, so that our subscribers have data to build these analyses by region, by market, by size. And I think it's important, too, that the data is strictly confidential. Masio has been in business for over 30 years, Armada for, gosh, 25 years. So you've got two companies that together are, are 70 years worth of experience, and we wouldn't be here today if we didn't guard data from our clients. So uh, each individual client, you know, you'll have your own private and confidential customized report. We have the overall study. We provide you, but we will build what we call an executive overview deck. Keith and I will do an overview with the executive team, help you socialize this data into the organization so that your team understands the value of the data that they have and, and can see the power of that. And then lastly, each client can opt to include a, one or two custom questions uh, that's, uh, that's reported out only to you. Uh, every company has maybe something they're working on, something they're wanting to learn about that's not in the base mass DOR model study. But this is an opportunity to take this multi-client and include a little bit of customization in it to provide even greater value. 
Yeah, and one of the big benefits that um, I know you and I both have talked a lot about and the thing that we both enjoy about this approach is it's a lot less expensive than if you were to go do this study on your own. Um, we both uh, know a client that back in the late 90s spent up upwards of about $200,000 to do a study like this. And by doing a multi-client study, you can get it for a fraction of that. Um, so it makes it more affordable, allows more companies to participate. But the thing that's that, that, that makes it even and separates it even more is you still get that customized. It feels like a custom survey and custom report, custom research project done just for you, uh, which is what what, what I love about it. Um, another thing I love is that uh, you know it's so stable. We have been watching and using this study now, me personally for 15 years. I know Mastio, and the reason why we partnered with Mastio is that you guys are on the 27th edition of a natural gas study. And we're, you're going into your 18th year of a, of a multi-client transportation study. So um, you have done this so many times. Um, I've been involved with you and we've done this together so many times that I, I feel like we can pull a lot of the little historical facts and figures out. And, you know, it's uh, it's almost like you, you do something long enough that you kind of know the idiosyncrasies of research and industries and how it works. And uh, you can really help clients get way ahead of the curve. Um, they don't have to go through the same learning process that we've gone through. Uh, the other thing, too, is that I, I love the fact that by doing it this way, also, there are customers out there that a distributor may not be working with today, but that but that customer um, has touched them in a way that has they've had a buying experience with them, and the actual distributor doesn't even know it. And so there are some times when I, I think some surprises come up from that customer base, and the perceptions are definitely going to be very interesting and insightful. And it, it just increases the number of perceptions that you can collect, whereas if you kind of went out and tried to do this on your own, it would be very difficult for you to do enough surveys by yourself to be able to get enough of a response rate to be able to make it worthwhile. But the fact that you're spreading it out over so many different companies in the industry um, and not commingling the data, but you're getting, as you said earlier, just people to, to give you perceptions of four distributors that they have used in the last six months. So they've had that recent experience, um, but it just magnifies and um, almost exponentially increases the number of responses that you're going to get. And then the last thing is, again, as, as we've said many, many times, it's so the customization opportunities here, using the data tool, uh, being able to commingle it with your own corporate data. There's so many different cuts of this data that you can make uh, that if you've used a study just as it is, um, the way it gets presented to you, just, you know, basic, uh, you're going to get tremendous value out of it. But Absolutely. then when you when you throw the rest of that data analysis power into the mix. And as you said, the ability to incorporate it into BI, there's so many different things that you can do with this that just really takes the value and it. it really takes it off the chart. It's one of the reasons why these companies continue to participate year after year. And Absolutely. You know, one study is 27th edition, the other study 18th edition, they keep coming back every single year because they want that intelligence. They want that knowledge. They want to know how the customer base is shifting and, and what customers are finding important. Absolutely. Yeah. So last thing we want to do is just talk about sort of next steps and, you know, when the new study is going to start. So right now we're planning on a launch of really this first edition of the electronics and electrical dis distribution study, probably by Q4 of this year, uh, may spill over into Q1. We'll see what timing looks like. Uh, but I know that Ken, we're anxious to get the coordination and planning started. So we really want to get those distributors who are really are interested in participating to sit down and talk with us one on one. Absolutely. Um, just to learn more about it, to look at a broader view of the study so they can see samples of what it would look like, what what specific uh, advantages it would deliver to them. Um, data collection would begin sometime around Q3 of 2023. Um, and that, you know, maybe if, if the timing works out and interviews are conducted fast enough that individual participants would start probably, you know, start getting their reports probably in Q1 of 24. Um, typically on a on a survey like this, Kevin, I mean, how many different respondents would you see like in like the transportation study, for instance? Yeah, it, it varies by industry. The LTL study transportation, we do about 1800 interviews. I mean, it's a very, very large study. I think oftentimes the first time we do a study, that's maybe a little bit more condensed. Yeah. Um, it, it, it sometimes takes a little bit of time to get traction. But I think uh, given the success we had with the the earlier study we did in this space for a, a large participant, a single client study, we feel like there's a lot of opportunity to, to really move this needle forward as we start talking about this in, in summer and, and understand what really looks like from a number of interviews perspectives. So I think the key to us is 
once you've had a chance to look at this and, and, and digest this internally and discuss, Keith and I would love the opportunity to, to visit with you over the telephone and walk you through some additional slides, uh, more in-depth on the process of, of the Mass 2R model study and what that looks like, and, and really share some of the success stories of other organizations, because that's really what it's about, is what does this study do for me as an organization? And we mentioned in that initial slide about the, what it answers but okay, with those answers, what can I do as an organization to leverage this data to grow my company? And I think those are the things you'll learn once you take that opportunity to reach out to us and schedule a call. I think that's fantastic. And you know, one of the things that this study measures is value overall. Mm -hmm. And and I know you and I both, as as friends and you know, as as business associates, um, we want the the study to deliver optimal mm -hmm. value. Yes, and that's the whole point. And so we're going to do everything we can to make it successful for any participant. Um, <clears throat> they're going to get consulting services they weren't even expecting, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, and at the end of the day, it's the the comments you made earlier: twenty seven editions of a pipeline study, eighteen editions of a logistics study, twenty five years of Armada, thirty three years of Mastio. We're in this for the long haul. So that's what I think is a, is a critical point to point out. But again, please take them take a moment to give us a call send us an email and let's continue the discussion. I appreciate everyone's time and attention. Um, again, contact information is on the website. Uh, please reach out. Talk Thank you. you. Thanks. Bye -bye. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you, Keith.